The opinions expressed in the following are solely those of the speaker and is not suitable for medical advice, diagnosis, or care. And uh, you'll be honest with them. You know, it's not something that needs to be just hidden in the bedroom. You can talk to your friends about it. And I've, I've been amazed personally as I've talked with, with people and just been you know, open about, about OSA and about what, what the changes are worth. You'd be amazed in a room of people you know, that, that you'll actually find somebody else who's, who's, uh, you know, who's never talked to anybody about it, never told anybody about it. It's kind of a quiet disease. And you know, really, they're, you know, they're, they're hose heads just like you. And um, you know, so that's, that's helpful. You know, be a friend. Um, you know, talk to them honestly. You know, share your feelings and your heart. The other thing is, is you know, this, and I can't uh, stress this enough. You know, hey, after you're diagnosed, that isn't the end of your journey. You know, you're going to learn about masks. You're going to learn about machines. Um, you know, you become educated. You know, if you're just partially, you know, well, I know I have it, and I kind of know what it is, and you know, I kind of know what the symptoms are. I know what my symptoms are, but not a whole list. You know, if you really want to sit down with somebody, you know, take some time getting informed about, about you know, the whole of the symptoms and the whole of effects and the whole of what can cause it in the different types. You know, one of the easiest ways, you know, to do that is not only be informed, but also be prepared. And, uh, you know, this, I picked this up at the, uh, at the sleep lab. Uh, the first one of these I actually got, you know, after my study night, I was going through and they had, you know, free literature. So, you know, I'm a reader, you know, so I picked this up. You know, this is the most unfair, um, you know, flyer I have ever seen. Uh, you know, the person yawning there. You know, I had this on my on, on a seat next to me uh, driving home after my sleep study, and it was you know it was about a twenty minute, thirty minute drive. You know, back to the house after my sleep study, uh, and I I just catch a glimpse of this of her yawning, and I mean it was just so unfair. You guys are probably yawning now. Um, it, you know, I I almost crashed the car yawning so much, um, and I was trying to figure out what the heck. You know, I, mean, I just got a yawning fit. Well. And I was just catching this out of the corner, so I flipped it over, and it was pretty good. So, you know, hey, if, if they're dealing with daytime sleepiness, you know, pull this out and be like, yeah, you see this? And they'll be like, oh, man. You know, uh, you know, little psychology there, but, you know, get something like this. You know, um, you know, these are free, you know, at your doctor's office. You know, I mean, I, I've picked up, you know, two of them. You know, I pick up one every time I'm there. Um, you know, I, I ought to pick up five because, you know, I keep giving them out. You know, just... Just, just as casual friend stuff, and they can take that home. You know, they can look at it. They can learn about it for themselves. You know, if they're computer literate, you know, hey, direct them to uh, to CPAP Choice. Direct them to uh, you know American Sleep Apnea Association, and uh, you know CPAP Talk, and and uh, and a lot of the other places out there that are going to explain what this is. You know, uh, you know, it, there's a big learning curve, and uh, you'd be surprised at how many misunderstandings there are about this disease. So you know, become informed. Um, one of the things you also need to be informed about is, is be informed about the stereotypes that are out there. You know, uh, the person who, who we talked with, you know, he was in his late 50s. He was a, a man. You know, he's a risk factor for it. But, uh, you know, he wasn't really obese. And, uh, you know, that's a big stereotype is that, you know, it, it's only fat old men that, that get this disease. Um, that's not true. Uh, you know, even snoring isn't a good indicator. You know, 40% of people who are diagnosed with OSA don't, don't snore. Um, you know, it can be a symptom. You know, loud snoring is, is in the symptoms list, but that doesn't mean it's that way. You know, more and more women are diagnosed with, with OSA. In fact, you know, on CPAP Choice, you know, um, basically 25% of our viewers, um, you know, it gives you the demographics if you have a YouTube channel. Um, you know, 25% of the people on the site uh, looking at videos, you know, it's, it's, they're females. And, uh, you know, I know my wife, is, my wife has OSA. She has severe OSA. And, uh, you know, so don't, don't think it's just for fat old men who snore a lot. Um, you know, be, be aware of those types of stereotypes and be aware of the real facts, you know, that 40% of, of people with OSA don't snore. Um, you know, that, that blows people away when, when you have, are really prepared with the information. You, know, you might be prepared with a flyer. You, know, you might be prepared just, just after you're educated. You know, but be informed. You know, the next thing is, is explain. And, and this is the thing that, you know, I, I, after talking with this family member, you know, I discovered a few things. And the few things was is he caught to the fact that four years ago they had told him to get tested, and uh, you know I don't beat up on that because uh, you know you you will beat them right out of something that that could help their health, and uh, you know well and I just use as another another example hey then you really should get tested because you really do have you know uh, from the symptoms that I see you know you really should get tested. And uh, you know, you'd be amazed at how far that goes. The other thing was, is I, I'm pretty sure that he, you know, he had some major misconceptions about what what a CPAP was, about what treatment was. And you know, after talking with him, you know, he thought that 
basically what you were breathing was compressed oxygen. And uh, no, you know, I, I, I showed him the CPAP, showed him the inlets, no, it's room air, you know, it's heated and humidified, and, uh, you know, and, and really, you know, showed him the machine. You know, he thought it was, it, it, he thought he'd have a compressor, you know, he, he's used to being a hands-on guy, you know, he thought it'd be hooked to, uh, you know, an air compressor out in the garage and lines running all over the house, and, you know, the thing would be, you know, I mean, you know, I have to put it out in the garage because it's so loud. You know, no, it wasn't any of that. And he was really surprised to see a real CPAP machine and what it sounded like. You know, I said, when you had the mask on, you know, I closed off the air. You know, it's just so it wasn't blowing. I mean, that's how quiet it is. Um, you know, it's just room air. It's heated and humidified. The other thing that he had a misconception about was, was he also had some sinus issues. And I just told him, you know, hey, I had sinus issues all my life. In fact, when I first, you know, started, I got a full face mask because, uh, because, you know, Pappy thought, you know, I, I'm never going to be able to breathe through my nose continually. And uh, believe it or not, the heat and humidity, um, you know, the pollen filters and everything, you know, that, that all, my sinus issues pretty much went away. You know, I still get a sinus infection if I get a cold. I mean, that's pretty pretty routine for me. But uh, but my daily sinusitis type issues uh, really resolved. And he was really wanting to get his sinuses treated before that, too. And I said, well, you know, mine resolved with this, and I bet they will for you, too. No, that's not 100%. But, uh, you know, hey, if you aren't abusing your nose every night from snoring and your sinus cavity from, you know, flapping around, and, uh, you know, there's a good chance that will recover. So, you know, he went out, he got, had a sleep test, you know, discovered, you know, I don't have, I haven't looked at the numbers yet. I told him how to get his test results, and, you know, we're going to sit down and talk about stuff, and different treatment options, different machines, you know, talking about the bill codes and, and uh, you know, how to get a good data-capable machine that you can look at. And, uh, you know, hey... You know we're well on our way, and I'm I'm excited to sit down with them. You know, hey, it's like having a friend in the a friend in, in treatment, and uh, you know your friendship can go a long way for those around you. You know your word of mouth and you getting educated and skilled. You know don't 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 think that you have to be you know the tops. I mean just just sharing your story with a friend. You know you'd be able to help them too. So so this is Pappy. Hey, you know those are some practicals of sharing this stuff with with uh, with some friends and. Uh, you know, hey, th these are good things to do. You know, get educated. You know, get get prepared. You know, get a couple of these. You know, I had had my sleep test on hand to show them what what actually happened during my night. And hey, you know, explaining goes a long way to to, to uh, you know to curing somebody's uh, fears and uh, their you know their their hesitations, especially showing them the machine, you know, the machines and, and about what they're all about. So hey guys, you know it's Pappy. Hey, this is a little bit of information for you. So hey guys, you know as usual, you know sleep well and we'll see you later.